Let me tell you what the uh, Oxford uh, Dictionary definition is. Dislike of or prejudice against Islam or Muslims, especially as a political force. So there you go. That's from the Oxford English Dictionary. David Campbell-Bannerman joins me, chairman of the Conservative Democratic Organisation Campaign Group and a former Conservative MEP. David, very good evening to you. Is there any doubt in your mind that Lee Anderson is not an Islamophobe? Well, I'm sorry, I'm going to ask you what you think Islamophobia No, I ask the questions. Because, uh, you know, we had the, the leader of the Labour Party on uh, Radio 4 this morning who couldn't define it. I prefer... Well, I've just what, given you, the, I've just given you well, the definition. I don't accept that. I'm sorry, it's not what the government uh, uses and it's not what the Conservative Party uses and we're talking about Conservative whip. And Islamophobia, like homophobia, is an irrational fear of something which I don't subscribe to. I prefer the phrase anti-Muslim hatred, which is what Kemi Badnock is using as a phrase. That's clear for everyone. You know, we're totally against anti-Muslim hatred. And, well, he's you know, guilty this, of that as well. Islamophobia has been hijacked by some extreme elements to shut down free speech, which I thought the LBC was in favour of in. You know, there's real dangers and shutting people down you can't have legitimate criticism of a religion and the other thing is it racist if it's religion no, no i think it I, is it's i have no problem i have no problem with people being critical of any religion what i have a problem with is somebody accusing the democratically elected mayor of london whose policies i generally disagree with um, i have to tell you but to allege that he's in thrall to islamist extremists without a scintilla of evidence for doing so i think is an absolute disgrace well, I think that's where Lee went over the top, to be honest, where, you know, he talked of is Islamist uh, mates. Uh, however, let's look at Khan's record. He was outside Milton Keynes' uh, jail calling for the uh, non-prosecution of jihadis in 2004. Uh, there are quite a few examples of him. I mean, you know, there he is talking about Muslims, fellow Muslims, um, as being Uncle Tom's, you know, too uh, susceptible to to, uh, you know, being nice to white people. So I'm afraid and I, I think we're in danger of actually being very irrational here. And I, I'm worried about the definitions. As I say, if if Lee Anderson was showing anti muslim hatred, there's no argument. There's no five days of debate. He's out. Do you know what I mean? And I don't think he is anti-Muslim. I don't think he's racist. And I think what's going to happen as a result of this, I think he'll walk to reform possibly tomorrow. Um, and the Conservative Party you and I love or have loved, um, you know, is in danger of actually being obliterated. So you may not have the chance to vote the Conservative Party again at the way we're going. And I hope that's not the case. But it, it's not a single offence, is it? And it's not as... I mean, he, he, OK, he is a backbencher now, but when he made some other unfortunate remarks, which could have been construed as, well, I, you could call them racist, I suppose, the F-off back to France thing for asylum seekers, he was deputy chairman of the Conservative Party, and number 10 came out in support of him then, which to me was an absolute disgrace, and it would not have happened under any other Conservative leader, I don't think. Well, I, I think that why is Lee Anderson in that post? It, he represents the authentic voice of ordinary people in no, the he red. Uh, uh, that, no, that, that's why he's been appointed. Um, and I think he is an authentic voice. And sometimes that language isn't quite right. It's off beam. But it's, it's you know, he's a very genuine person, Lee Anderson. I think he's been terribly treated. I have to say, politically, this is a disaster for Conservatives because we had Starmer on the ropes, uh, you know, for allegedly bringing pressure on the Speaker. You know, you've got over 80 MPs who, who want have no confidence in the Speaker. And that's all been thrown out the window by this so-called race row, which isn't a race row, I don't, I don't believe. Well, what is it then? What's, what's he being got rid of for? How, why has he lost the whip if it isn't a race row or an Islamophobic I row? Well, the, the government itself, as you showed your clip earlier of, of the Minister Tomlinson, they can't seem to use define Islamophobia either. So, so, what, in, so why has he been fired? Uh, well, I think the, as I say, the one thing I think he went over the T, OTT on was uh, Islamist mates. I think that was, you know, association, that was unfair association on Matt uh, Carter. I mean, if... 
David, you know as well as I do that if somebody came on my show or said in public anywhere that that can a Conservative cabinet minister is being controlled by the Jewish lobby, you know exactly that would be classed as anti-Semitic, the equivalent of Islamophobia, and quite right too, and that person's feet wouldn't see the light of day. They would be fired immediately with no way back. Now, admittedly, he, he did have the whip with John, but they're still saying, oh, well, all he needs to do is apologise and he can come back. Uh, I mean, you know as well as I do, there are double standards going on here. There's a hierarchy of, whether you call it a hierarchy of racism or, or isms or phobias or whatever you like, it is quite clear that one group of people is being treated one way and another group of people a different way. No, I mean, as I say, I have real problems with the the terminology of Islamophobia. And you mentioned Baroness Wazi, she's campaigned on this. But, you know, if we're in real danger of actually preventing people uh, expressing free speech, free expression, and... If we go down that road, then this will fan extremism. And I saw that in Northern Ireland. I was involved with the peace process. And I saw what happens with sectarian politics. And it isn't pretty. And, you know, if if this is our hysterical reaction, I think it is a hysterical reaction to, OK, he was over the top, as I say, about the Islamist mates. But, well, you know, well, we've got to be very careful because what the public think is what on earth are you doing going on about this uh, on LBC when actually the real problem is Hammer supporters on our streets beaming anti-Israeli... Yeah. And, I, and I, I, you, you can cover two things. There. You can cover two issues at once. I've covered that many times on the programme. Yeah. You, you won't find anyone LBC who's been a more staunch supporter of Israel than I have and had a lot of flack for it. But I can see when yeah. somebody has done something wrong. We didn't cover this last night because every other programme had done. We're covering it tonight because Lee Anderson has kept the story going. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I mean, uh, we'll see what happens. I just think it was not very clever politics. He should have uh, ap apologised for going over the top on that specific remark. Uh, and we, we could have all moved on because I'm mu much more concerned about um, loss of police control in the streets and where that leads than uh, a silly remark where yeah, he went to I know. Car. But as I say, you you can cover more than one subject at a time. I mean, that's what kind of what we do here. But yeah, you, you still haven't answered my question about double standards. Whereas if this had been somebody making an anti-Semitic remark, um, I think you would have been all over them. Well, uh, no, I, 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 you know, I'm totally obviously uh, against anti-Semitic remarks, but I mean, there is, there is again problems of definition. I've, I've, I said, I've spoken to barristers, I've spoken to former solicitor general. None of them can define Islamophobia. None of them can give us a proper definition. Well, maybe, maybe it's because they don't. Oh, we're getting want into to. trouble on this, you know. We, we, any Muslim will be able to tell you Islamophobia when they see it. And we don't, we don't need necessarily a, a sort of a, a one definition for a phrase because we all know it. We know racism when we see it. We know anti-Semitism when we see it. So why can't we know Islamophobia when we see it? I think, I think that's very dangerous, Ian, uh, going down that road. Uh, you, you know, if, if a group of people start, you give them the freedom to say, actually, uh, I think everything you say is objectionable and racist. What happens next? I mean, we, we, we're meant to live in a free society and this is about free speech and free expression i'm very worried where this is going and there's some very dangerous elements that are pushing this argument and labor okay. might actually put it legislation uh, and uh, like hate crime with the smp you know it becomes a, an assault on free speech well, we, free we, we've speech. already got hate crime legislation and um i mean i'm not suggesting that lee anderson has necessarily contravened that but i think there might be a case to be made for it uh, david thank you for joining us that's david campbell bannerman chairman of the conservative democratic organization